Hello and welcome back to Leibniz Park, Lillianburg. It's been a few weeks since the last episode and I've had a few personal things which is why it's been a little delay since the last episode uh, but you don't need to know about that so in this video we will be working on a couple of different things uh, we have pretty much finished with Rotor Blitz, the Gerslauer Infinity Coaster so that's almost done um, there's probably a few small touches which I might need to add but it's hardly anything so we are going to be continuing with the area which is next to it and we are going to try and keep a sort of steampunk kind of vibe but it is going to be separate ride we do work on a ride and you can see that in the background it is an SNS screaming swing so that's what we will be beginning the theming for in this episode but right now we are making a garage and yeah a garage doesn't seem like anything important and no it's not it's just a cool bit of theming I had lots of inspiration from trips drill to build this garage and it will have the same kind of brick plaster feel of Carajo at Trips Drill. And I just thought that this kind of thing would look really cool near the entrance of the ride. And there you can see a classic red car which I believe came in the vintage DLC. Um, so yeah that just goes there. And the name of the ride Rotor Blitz in English it translates to Red Flash. So possibly the car could be... You know that could be what red flash is that that is rotor blitz the car um, and then you could imagine that that car is the one that goes around the track I guess um, but yeah we're making this little nice cozy garage um, I'm really happy with how it turned out I think it looks really good and yeah we just uh, put in some of the plaster in like I said because Carajo at trips real which was a massive inspiration for this whole area that does utilize these bits of plaster combined with the brick uh, it's a really nice texture the sort of rough brick and then with the smooth plaster it does really work well and I think the colors the uh, sort of reddy browns mixed with the cream they, they really do look good and we're just putting some uh, decal pieces from the theme makers toolkit on here and just to act as windows but it looks a little bit dirtier so it's you know it's more realistic than just see-through glass um, and yeah we are putting two of these cars in and again to add some variety one side of the garage is closed I thought it would just look a little bit better if it was closed um, but these cars probably would be real cars at a theme park um, I know that some theme parks do have them I'm pretty sure um, there's one of these kind of limousines at Holiday Park in Germany uh, around the area of Skyscream and I'm pretty sure they somehow fit that in with the Halloween event so maybe they could use these cars at a Halloween event at this park as well and Halloween is also coming up very shortly which leads me on to something that I wanted to talk about and that is uh, my theme park plans for the end of this year and yeah with coronavirus it's not really gone too well I had actually booked to go to Alton Towers um, next week uh, for Scarefest but I'm currently self-isolating because at school you know coronavirus is just gone a bit mental seems like every man and his dog has it at this point and yeah I've got to self-isolate for 14 days so Alton Towers will not be happening which is really sad and I was pretty annoyed when I found out um, but yeah if you do have symptoms don't go into school because that's what happened someone I believe at my school with symptoms decided oh I'll just come in and then apparently they've passed it on to some other people who I've come close to so now I'm self isolating um, but I feel perfectly fine I don't think I've got the virus at all probably um, but anyway yeah uh, if you've got any more theme park plans for Halloween, I know it's difficult with coronavirus, but uh, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear what you've what you guys have got planned. Um, and yeah, now we've basically finished that garage. It was quite a simple build, but I think it does really look good, and it sort of matches up against the uh, finished loop, which is the element there, which is right next to the entrance and it looks really impressive I think here is a test seat which uh, was from the theme makers toolkit again um, this is the exact copy of the one on the 
uh, the in-game train. I'm not sure if it's exactly the same as the Ghost Star Infinity Coaster in real life, but it's the closest we'll get. Um, but yeah, that just adds a bit of realism there. And now we are building a Vekoma, and you're probably thinking, uh, what's going on? Why, why am I building a Vekoma right on top of the paths? But yeah, again, I took some inspiration from Holiday Park. They do have an old uh, Vekoma MK1200, I believe. If I'm getting that wrong, I apologize. But it's one of these classic Vekoma looping coasters. And it closed in 2013. It was called Super Verbal. And then Skyscream, the uh, Premier Rides Skyrocket 2, uh, replaced it. And that's what's going to happen here. There was this uh, old Vekoma coaster, which I've decided to call the Corkscrew. Because, come on, what else would you call it? Um, so I'm imagining that this park used to have this ride, but it's been replaced since by a Gerstlauer Infinity Coaster, you know, much more modern, advanced um, ride, so it would have better operations, um, probably better maintenance, probably cheaper maintenance costs and all that kind of thing. And, you know, just as uh, an attempt to uh, draw more guests to the park, so parks do have to adapt and make new changes you know they can't just stick with the old rides forever and I have actually made a, a sign which is like a gravestone not gravestone but it's like a memorial it's saying what this ride is and for example actually Corkscrew the same name at Alton Towers does go over the entrance plaza for Alton Towers and there's a plaque there just like the one I've put in um, I created this on Photoshop and it's uh, written in German um, I use some of my German friends to help me uh, translate that, so thank you, uh, you know who you are if you're watching this video. Um, but the guy who actually made the sign is called Theme Park Gaming, and he is currently working on a studios park, and he's got so many episodes in that, a lot of work's going into it. Um, really underrated series, not many people have been watching it, um, I do think he deserves a lot more credit for what he does, so I'll... Uh, try to remember to leave a link to his channel in the description and yeah just check out his studios park it's really good and I'm grateful that he made that sign for me moving on now we are making the facade and the first uh, room of the queue line for this coaster not a coaster flat ride you did see at the start of the video there was an SNS screaming swing in the background and this is the beginning of the queue line and you can see that it does keep the same kind of colour scheme with the uh, maroons and dark browns and dark reds as Rotoblitz, the adjacent, the opposite ride, you know, just across the path. Um, but it does look a little bit more temporary. You can see that there's all these corrugated iron roofs and some sort of, you know, um, old looking ruined like wooden planks. And this is going to be themed around mining. Um, I think I said previously in this series a storyline of the ride and how it's based in a quarry and yeah this flat ride will be based in the quarry and the name for this flat ride is Dynamite almost just like the one at Freisite Park Plön. so I know it's not in German but not all um, German theme parks have German names for the rides um, so I guess that makes sense because English is an international language I guess um, but I still do want to have a lot of German names for the rides at this park because, for example, look at Trips Drill, a lot of the names, I think, yeah, all of the names for the rides there are in German. So Trips Drill, again, is a big inspiration, but I do want to look at some other parks such as Holiday Park, for example, uh, Expedition G-Force. That sort of feels like an English name, even though it probably is a cognate, I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, the uh, flat ride Dynamite does take place in this quarry and I decided to um, put it into the ground a lot more than I would have originally planned and that is because it's absolutely massive. It is inspired by one at Cedar Point which is the tallest in the world and there's no others as tall as this one so Rush at Thought Park is quite a uh, popular you know when you think of an SNS screaming swing you think of Rush at Thought Park which I've never actually ridden but it does look really good fun and next time I go to Thought Park I'll be sure to ride it and yeah the, this uh, in-game one is almost twice the size of Rush so it's absolutely massive um, 
and it kind of took away a bit from Rotor Blitz, so I decided to sink it into the ground so it's not as much as an eyesore. Um, but I have then thought of some other ideas for how I can, you know, integrate that uh, flat ride being in a pit and how I can theme it. And I've got some really good ideas. Um, again, it's themed around mining, so you'll see me starting to build the kind of mine shaft uh, later on in this video. Um, but this first room here is sort of like tacky budget Wild West theming. Um, yeah, I wasn't really trying to make it look anything amazing. Um, I don't think it looks bad though. I think, yeah, it's just a couple of miscellaneous Wild West items which sort of link to mining. Um, and Wild West and Steampunk do definitely have their crossovers with the kind of machinery. Uh, I think if you type in Western the uh, western scenery theme that gives you all of the pieces that you would use for steampunk anyway so um while they're not exactly matching with rotor blitz they still do sort of fit so i thought it'd be a good idea to have this mining themed flat ride next to it and yeah we're making this um big mine building again and there's lots of boxes and all that kind of crap inside it and I haven't actually finished the rest of this facade, um, I'm going to do that off camera probably because I don't exactly know what to do yet, um, um, but Mystery Mine at Dollywood, the uh, Gerstlauer Eurofighter, uh, I'm going to look at that a lot to get some reference images of how to make it look good, it's like a really shack type of building, you know, I don't know what an adjective is to describe it, but it's really yeah, flimsy, that kind of thing. Uh, anyway, we are now on to beginning the mine shaft, which to start really doesn't look anything advanced. It's really simple, but you've got to start somewhere. Um, yeah, we're just using bits of wooden beams again. Um, I was looking at some uh, reference images of mines again, so you know I kind of had a look at how they support them and how they have beams across to try and prevent rock falls because obviously they do have these mining accidents which are quite common especially in the UK there's all of these instant incidents that have happened especially like in Wales and all that stuff um, so mines do the best they can to try and stop it from collapsing so you can see the cross beams going in here um, but you can see that the side of this mine shaft is uh, slightly exposed so that side is open and I thought walking down these steps you would be mostly in the dark but then you'll also get a view out to the right of the um, the flat ride whilst it swings I thought that would be quite a cool little feature but yes then on the other side we are going to be putting in all these rocks and um, to make it look like you're properly in the middle of a mine and with these rocks yeah just made a big actually this was from the um, <laughs> steam workshop because I couldn't be bothered to get a massive rock wall myself so I thought what's the point in putting effort in just putting loads of rocks but I yeah just take some of them out and rotate them a bit so that it doesn't look too duplicated um, and but yeah we did then basically made like one section of this entire mine shaft so I put their rocks in and some different um, beams. The one across the roof is for electrical cables, just for a bit of realism, how they would uh, put lamps in and all that stuff. Um, but along the left side, you can see that there is the rocks which are held back by some wooden planks, and I think that has a really nice effect. Um, and yeah, I think this is looking really good. I may build an actual mine shaft of the mechanism. Um, you know, on Baron Achtin Achtenegen Ticher Efteling. Um, I think that kind of wheel thing would look quite cool. Mainly, probably as a facade, though. Um, there is a little gap between the first queue line building and uh, the mine shaft here, so I guess I've got to somehow make that join up. And I'm not perfectly sure on what I'll do next. Um, in fact, my next Planet Coaster video won't even be on this park, so. Stay tuned for that. Some of you probably already know what's coming. Um, there was a teaser in one of my recent videos, and that is a new Planet Coaster series for you guys to look forward to. Um, but I'm going to speak about that when it actually arrives. Um, but yeah, again, just some random bits of tat on here. Uh, somehow these um, framework, this, 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 
somehow the framework is supposed to keep up the rocks. I apologize for that stutter there, but yeah, that's all from me. I really hope you have enjoyed watching, and you will see me in the next video. Goodbye.